Hey everyone, welcome to another video. To fully understand this video, watch it all the way through. We will talk about the AMC squeeze plan, 11 AMC holds, how shorts will default, and a lot more. First, let's talk about adding operational revenue streams to pay for new business costs, extending debt terms at a discount, paying down debt principal strategically, and making future net profit at current net expense. It's impressive that we are net cash positive while planning our expansion. I believe it is important for everyone who owns AMC to understand why this is the AMC squeeze plan. This is the only way to figure out why AMC will grow and how we can beat the shorts. They need to invest in new businesses and find new ways to make money. That's exactly what they're doing with the money they're raising they use it to make AMC bigger. Now, AMC is growing, which is bad in many ways, which I'll talk about next. Next, we talked about the terms of the debt at a price while paying it off. This is what we did with the debt from 2026 and the debts that come after it in 2027, 2028, and so on. We already know that DEB is a big reason why AMC can't pay dividends, so if AMS can pay off its street, that will bring them one step closer to doing so. Once more, dividends are a way to get short sellers to cover their positions because the price of the dividend relies on how much Amazon decides to pay out. As we already talked about, shorts will have to pay dividends if they choose to short this stock. This means that if AMC decides to pay dividends, the shorts will have to do it. Also, it's great that we have net cash while planning for growth as we've already said, the only way for shorts to get out of this dangerous position is for AMC to file for bankruptcy. We already talked about the new business costs, and now you can see how these two things are related. First, we need to understand that for AMC to stay in business, they'll have to come up with new ways to make money and cover their costs. How do they do that with the cash they already have? The good news is that they're getting better over time, and the bad news is that they can keep a flat for now. Let's say they have enough cash to last them for three years. For AMC to be profitable after three years, they might need more than the money they got from the share sale. However, they could still stay afloat if they were able to build up enough income streams. This is what we need to keep the shorts in place. It will cost them more to make more synthetics, and we will make them pay even more when we squeeze. That's why I believe the AMC squeeze approach is so important it shows how important it is to have new business costs, pay down debt, and have cash on hand, or at least a good cash P. These things belong to AMC, which keeps shorts inside the company and makes them pay a lot when we squeeze them. Let's talk about how scared shorts are now. You can see that AMC and CNK and CNK are two different stocks. One is going up by 0.14% and the other is going down by 1.45%. They are both in the same business. Just remember that they are both in the same business, but one is down 1% and the other is up a little. It doesn't really matter that the day is still green. Just like the title are here, make it make sense now. What is the difference now? Let me break it down for you guys. The difference is one stock is majority um, institutional owned and another stock is you majority retail owned. And now when you take a look at this, when you understand that in mind and you have to take a look at this again, it makes sense to see why one stock is obviously experiencing a red day and another stock is obviously experienced in the green day. Because one stock has the ability to bankrupt these hedge funds and short sellers, but another stock is used as a collateral for these hedge funds and short sellers. And again, this is why they need to keep one Florida afloat. And why they want to push one firm to bankruptcy, but obviously we know that that's not going to be the case. And again, this is why they are always suppressing AMC. And when you see AMC to be at the price it is now, you know that is not a true reflection of the value of its stock. Because in this... Industry, despite being probably POs and possibly the best, without a doubt you know being at the forefront of everything one could argue a pioneer in the industry right now, they are still being surprised they're still seeing decline in their market cap because the majority owned um shares of this. Company is retail and not institutions and there is a large short position on this and it makes them scared and that's why they're trying to suppress ANC. And this is one thing we can see on how they were trying to suppress AMC so another year has passed where we held through all the manipulation and hold according to the NESC hold record from December 2022 to December 2023 AMC was hailed 11 times. It's a huge difference from last year from 47 holds to prevent AMC from squeezing to um, to 11 and GMN. Something just seems odd now. What we're seeing again is the manipulation that happens to AMC. And we know this because again AMC, the reason why they hold AMC is because they are scared that every time AMC has a run up it will obviously force margin calls. It will default many short sellers because of the potential that it can run up and we can understand this from just again understanding. The fact that if they need to hold a stock, it's because they're extremely scared of what um damage this stock can do. Now we are seeing the big difference in the Hulk going down now. In my opinion, I do think it's the fact that again, we are just right now building up for AMC. We still do have a lot of.
potential, I think that they spent more money this year to suppress AMC than they did in the last year because we have to understand as the situation gets longer and longer, the situation and this whole hole that they've dug just becomes bigger and bigger and they need more money to power on. I still do think that right and going into the future, every time we do see AMC have a run up, it's very likely that they are still going to try and suppress it. But what the difference will be is that the power would have then will be way stronger than what power we have now. Because as we go by day by today, yes, the synthetics for AMC created is becoming bigger and bigger, but the power we retail investors have is also becoming bigger and bigger. And that's the edge we have over them. And that's why I think we'll make AMC squeeze in the future more than this. You guys can see how articles right now are still trying to push AMC down the price of AMC. Um, stock keeps going down. 2023 trend meme buyers put a lot of value on the stock, but it fell more than 82% as the company's shares continued to lose money while the SP500 rose by 25.2%. Chris Boy says that we are investors in general, not just in memes. With 10 wins in a row, AMC is no longer a joke stock because it can't go bankrupt. It's important for people to understand this, so I'll say it again, AMC is a good company to invest in right now. We need to know this, but as always, please study it and do your research. This is not advice about money. In theory, there have been 10 consecutive beats in the data, which shows a major change. We have good cash flow and are raising our business costs, as we already talked about. Putting all of these together shows that filing for bankruptcy is not a choice, so you are given shares again. Three years ago, it was said that the stock would fail and have weak prospects. In just three years, the stock's market value has dropped more than 45 times, but its assets have gotten 10 times better. In light of the similarities between the two, this makes sense. That is why short sellers are trying to spread the idea that AMC is a meme stock and that you should sell your AMC. You should ask them why they are bothering you so much about a stock worth $1 billion every day if they want you to sell. Because short sellers and hedge funds need your real AMC shares. In the same way, it's clear that everyone else, including the banks, is stuck in their current situation. I think they are lying. Because the 7.5% credit card debt default rate for small banks is almost reached, it is easy for big banks to hide problems with these banks' credit card debt default rates. It is now 200 basis points higher than the rates that small banks saw in 2008, and it is 50 basis points higher than the rates that big banks saw in 2008. Since the Fed started raising interest rates, the percentage of late payments at both small and large banks has more than doubled. People are sure that the economy is changing, even though rates are going up and inflation is still a problem. I could smell BS, as I already said. That's also what's going on with banks and the business as a whole. Also, keep in mind that hedge funds and short sellers get their money from these people. If they get hurt, so will hedge funds and short sellers, since that's where they got their money in the first place. Thanks to everyone who watched the movie. I will be back soon to see everyone.